Okay, what we got today is probably one of the most famous Maruku high-end guns that's about available, people know of. This is a G12 or a Grade 12 Maruku President. There is, there is Maruku Presidentials, there's SP100s, there's SP120s. If you look on our, is it Twitter or Instagram or Facebook? What are we on? Facebook and Instagram. Facebook and Instagram. If you have a look on our Instagram page, I believe we've got a picture of this G12 Maruku President and a SP120 Presidential laying on the table here, which is a very unusual thing. So let's just talk quickly about the gun. Basically, this is a 1985 gun. I've dated it, and if the people that are watching these videos can tell, you'll see because it's a PV designation, PV being uh, the date code system for Browning. So essentially, this gun being 1985, this is a 425 Browning, 325 Browning, something like that. Mechanically, internals, this is pretty well identical to what you're going to find in a 525 today what makes this gun special is the profuse engraving that's on the gun paul please bring the camera yep. over here i will lay the camera down and if you can just <coughs> go over the gun yeah we'll start from back here so we've got hand selected walnut basically it's american walnut but it is let's try and get the glare out of it yeah hand selected walnut We've also got, now stay where you are Paul, because yep. this is one of the only over and unders, certainly the only Maruka over and under that I've ever seen, where the silver oval is a yep. shield. Yep. Okay. The guy that owns this gun, JH, John Hughes, kindly lent me the gun. Now, his father was also a John Hughes. And John tells me this was his father's gun. So whether that was young John or old John, I've mentioned your name, John. <laughs> John Hughes. So what we've got here as well, Paul, we've got a so pistol. come with that sh as a shield. Like came that. with a shield. That is to show you that we're buying a quality gun, basically. I will try and go through and show every little piece that's on this gun. Uh, shield. Pistol grip cap. Yep. which I've had a good look at. I couldn't tell you whether it was in rosewood or in walnut, but this is either ivory or horn or bone, but I've had a good look at it. I think it's ivory, to be honest with you. Yeah. Is it coming out okay? Yeah, got that, yep. The checkering that we've got here as well, Paul. So we've got standard 18 lines to the inch checkering, which is a, a Maruku trait. But we've got this little tail that comes off the back of the checkering. Yeah. Okay. Again, just to denote more quality, basically. We've got a teardrop. Yep. And that's a hand-carved teardrop. How do I know that? Well, I've been bored enough to sit here and have a good look at it. Hand cut teardrop and then you've also got the little flutes little fillets yep. that are cut into the teardrop now we've got a long trigger guard tang on here paul yeah and we've also got the dog with a duck in its mouth basically yeah got that coming out is it a duck or is it a hare that is a duck that's a duck <clears throat> so also Paul and I don't know if you can see it I'll roll it this way this side's flat this is the side of your trigger guard yeah can you see that sits ever so slightly proud yeah that's coming out in the video I'll roll it over Paul let's focus it in a bit yeah you can right. see it like that also if I just put that little book in front can you see the book behind as well yeah right we'll come back to that book in a minute if I roll it over this way this because it's right-handed, you can't quite see it, but that's called a rolled edge trigger guard. I can't just make it out in a video that it's rolled. Okay, it's called a rolled edge trigger guard. It's so the trigger guard doesn't cut you, basically. I've never had trouble with a trigger guard cutting me. Some people do. <coughs> rolled edge trigger guard, basically. 
So let's move on to the underside of the engraving pool. Now what I've noticed from some of the videos is I'm not taking as much time on the engraving. Can you go right in on that engraving? Yeah, we can zoom right in on it, yep. So when I was talking about, and I'm glad you've got that BC Maruku president in the middle mm -hmm. there, Paul. When I was talking about the markings, it's... Do you want to come back a little bit? Yep. It's the markings that make the gun pull. It's... Uh, and what I'm trying to do with the videos is I'm trying to show people the different engravings, the different models, because what you have to do with brownings, if you want to come up here, what you have to do with brownings and marukus is you have to use an educated guess, which is hard enough. If you come up here a little bit, Paul, we'll oh, see yep. this piece here. This is one of the screws that hold the fore end iron to the fore end, basically. So that's highly engraved. We've got your fore end release catch that's highly engraved. Yeah. So this is the latest style because the fore end iron doesn't come all the way round the, this little hole here, basically, where you get your fore end catch. Some of the earlier Marukus you look at, this is all steel round here. Yeah. Also, we've got a piece of horn in a piece of ivory in the fore end there, basically. And you've got a schnabel fore end on it. You've got a schnabel fore end on it. Yeah. You've got a schnabel fore end. Sorry, I'm just trying to tell my dog to keep quiet there. <laughs> also, if we carry on looking, Paul, can you wind out a little bit? Yeah, we'll come out again. This here. See the checkering, as I mentioned in one of the other videos, the checkering is curved. Yeah. It's got a, a line to it, basically. Uh, that is, again, t to denote quality. The reason that we don't do straight edges is because a curved edge, especially when you're checkering, is a lot harder to do. So the, let's get sides of the action, Paul, and get a real good, a real good... Let's bring it over here because it's a bit dark there. Yeah. And yeah. then, again, what I'm what I'm saying to people, Paul, is this is probably one of the highest. Now, Maruku presidents. If I can give you a brief history on the gun, Maruku presidents is Browning's Maruku's answer to Browning's custom division. Basically, what Maruku do is they offer this gun, and I'll roll it over, Paul. Yeah, and you can see the top. Of the action and you can see the top lever there yeah I, I know it's upside down but pv if you look up browning's dating system pv is uh, 985 i think it was yeah now i've actively searched these guns out paul i've had about seven of these guns um i've had them in trap this one that we've got here is a 28 inch sporting gun i open the gun up You'll see here the chokes, the marking for the chokes, which is in Browning's tradition. Yeah. So we've got one star minus, which is three quarters. Yeah. We've got two stars minus, which is quarter. So we've got quarter, three quarter choke. We've got, now, I'm going from conversation to conversation here, Paul. Your ejector, your ejectors are highly polished on these guns. They're so highly polished, they actually look chrome. Yeah, they do, yeah. But they're not. They're just highly <laughs> polished, basically. So what I was saying about the history was this gun is this gun is Maruku's answer to Brownie's custom division. This gun, which is a G12, is in the style, and if you watch the earlier videos, you'll see what I'm talking about styles, it's in the style of a Browning Diana. It's not exactly a Browning Diana, but it's in the Browning Diana style. Now, if you come up a little bit, Paul, and you show yeah. this book that I've got. Yep. So if you come up here a little bit, Paul, I've been loaned this catalogue by, by my gunsmith again. Me and him are fascinated by Brownies and Marukus. And what you'll see on the front page, Paul, what you'll see on the front page yeah, let's get both in together. is this gun. Yep. Now, this is the only Maruku catalogue that I've ever seen with models and model numbers in it. Mm -hmm. 
funnily enough, this Maruku president is not in this book, which is a bit silly, really. But Maruku presidents, they do G11, G12, which is what we've got here, and they do a G13. I've been lucky enough to have a G13, uh, a G11 in my hands, which is a black action, which is this gun, which is in the style of a brown in Midas. Mm -hmm. What people should do is they should look on the internet and they should look at the different engraving styles to see what I'm talking about, basically. So this is in a brown in this is in a brown in Diana style G13 G12. They do a G11, which is in a brown in Midas style, and they do a G13, which is in a brown in presentation grade style. So I've tried to go, and it's 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 not just on the side there, Paul. It's on the yeah, top of the, the top, yeah. top of the barrels here. Profuse. The engraving that's on this gun for a Maruku is profusely engraved. Now I will just take the fore end off. Take the fore end off. And I will show, can you see that the ejector kickers are also highly, highly polished? Yep, got them coming out. Now, if we take the gun apart, which I'm not going to do, but if we take the gun apart inside, the hammers are polished, the cocking dogs are polished, everything is polished inside this gun because you're buying a quality gun, okay? So everything that can be done on this gun to denote quality, you've got hand-selected hand selected walnut, pistol grip cap with ivory, you've got a long trigger guard tang on it. See yep, it? yep. Long, tr long trigger guard tang, rolled edge trigger guard, profuse oak leaf and banner, I think was the style that we'll go with on that. So these are your banners. And then your oak leaves up here somewhere. But to be honest with you, they're not exactly oak leaves. They're just... But this is a Maruku president. This is one of the highest engraved, if not the highest engraved Maruku that you will find. Now, one of the other things, Paul. Can you see here? We're looking at the bead. It's a pearl. Oh, yeah. It's a proper Let's pearl. Move the camera around. It is a proper pearl. Yep. All right. Focusing on it. Oh, there we are. Got it? Yep. A proper pearl. Uh -huh. That is something that you will get on Maruku Presidents is a pearl foresight bead. Okay? So I'm doing these videos. I'm doing these videos, Paul, to show people what my passion is. And my passion is Brownies, Maruku and Winchesters. Don't get me wrong, Paul. I don't know everything about them, and I'm not pretending to know everything about them. I'm just trying to show people different engraving. I had I'd done a video on a on a brand in serial number seventy seven. I had a very nice man email me from somewhere in America. I think he was nice yeah. to talk to him. If anybody sees this video and they've got a, a Maruku, like it, give me a buzz. Talk to me. This is the main reason we're doing the videos is because we want to talk to like-minded people about Brownings, Marukus and Winchesters. Yep. So I will just... Got that side plate, yes, Paul? That's it, yeah, we've got all that in. Got the top of the action. Yeah. All right, I'll roll it round. This side. Yeah. And the underside. There we go, we've got some good close-ups as well of it. One thing I forgot to point out to you... When I said it's markings, Paul, if you look down here, tucked in the corner. Try and zoom in and focus on that. You're going to get it. There we go, go. yep, yeah, got it. That will be the engraver's name, or his initials at least. Yep. So, yeah, 28 inch Maruku President's Balter. G12, G12. So as I said, Paul, this gun, we've been lucky enough to have about seven of them. They vary on their dates in the fact that they go back as early as about 1979 and they go right up to about 19, about 1990, basically. Yeah. When you do the research on them, and it's not easy to find, 
this is a, a particularly low production number Maruku shotgun basically and we've got more to do <laughs> this is this I was loaning this gun and it, it, it I want people to say Maruku president all right yeah